Last Thursday night, about 1 o'clock in the morning, we had a very unusual thing happen. We had a young lady that was uh, moved upon by the Holy Spirit. This young lady has been in my church for quite a number of years, she and her whole family. She's a brilliant young lady. Her father is a doctor. Her mother is a school teacher. Amy graduated, of course, with honors. She's a very, very sharp young lady. But the Holy Spirit came on her in one of the most powerful ways I've ever seen him come on anybody. And I guess in any move of God, uh, you read books later after a move of God has all been ascertained, and you read about certain people that the Holy Spirit came upon. I believe in the Pensacola revival, Amy will go down as one of those people. She was one of the most unlikely people that I would ever imagine something like that to happen to. But she shook violently. No person, there's nobody here could shake the way that she shook. And her mother brought her to me the next night after this happened. And I saw her in the office and the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said that it would last for three days. And it did, it lasted for three days and now it subsided. But as the anointing begins to move, she, she feels it again somewhat and she does manifest somewhat, but it, it subsided now from what it was. But she had a, a powerful experience with God. And I'm going to have Amy come and share it with us. Amy? <laughs> and she's going to share with us what the Lord did for her. And I just wish, how many of you saw the Spirit of the Lord on her? Wasn't that something? I'm telling you. Many of you that are here tonight have not seen it, and it's hard to describe it, but I'm telling you, God was all over this girl. If I've ever seen God, I saw him on Amy. I'm going to have her tell you about it. Um, well, for those of you that didn't see what, what he did to my physical body, um, it was um, a little girl asked me to explain it to her last night, and it was the first time I thought about it explaining it, and... Really, the only way I can say is that it was like every muscle in your entire body was jerking as hard as it could all at the same time. And they say, you know, did it hurt? Well, after a while, my muscles got sore, some of them that jerked the most, but it was, it didn't hurt. You know, God wouldn't hurt me, you know, come on me and hurt me. But um, as far as my spirit and my mind and my soul and my emotions and my heart, that... The way it has affected me in those areas is that, um, well, all my life I've come to church, to this church, and because my mom told me we're going to church, and, you know, it never meant anything to me. It was just a part of my weekly routine, and I sat up in the balcony, and I watched, and I listened, and I, I know a lot about God, and, you know, I guess I'm educated in, in godly ways. And, but it never had anything to do with my life, the way I lived my life. I, I went in bad ways and I did bad things and you know, I, I was just basically a typical teenager and a typical child. I rebelled a lot and um, I guess that's an understatement. And um, so whenever this revival hit our church, my mom um, told me we're going and you know it's just another thing we'll go to church and we'll sit through church and we'll go home and I'll go out and do my thing and that was it but it wasn't it you know I came in this church and, and the first night I came was last Monday I guess it was a week ago today and I was just sitting back there and I was like I can't wait till this gets over and Brother Hill started preaching and it, it started convicting me but I, I've, I've always rebelled against things and, and I was like no I'm not gonna let this get to me and so I went home and my, I have two sisters and they were very excited about what was going on and and I was just like whatever you know just leave me alone I don't want to hear about it and so then we came back the next night and one of my, my older sister drug me up here to the altar during prayer and she made me stand here and um, I stood here for maybe two hours, you know, she just would not let me go sit down and I was just, I had a bad attitude, I've always had a bad attitude, I've always just been kind of a snot and, 
I mean, that, that's just the truth. I'm not going to hide anything from you. You can ask anybody. I know my family. They are always putting up with my bad moods. And um, so I stood up here, and, and Allison, my sister, she's used to me. She's used to dragging me around and making me do things. And, and so Brother Hill, he said, everybody that wants to be prayed for, gather up to the front row close. And, and so I, I did, and, and we gathered up, and it was real tight. You know, everybody was just real tight around me. And he said, pray. He said, pray and tell God what you want. And so it was kind of a challenge to me. You know, I, I was challenging God, you know, and that, that was just me before all this has happened. I was just, you know, kind of rotten. And, and so I said, okay, God, change my life. And I just shut my eyes and I prayed. And I said, change my life, change my life, maybe 10, 20 times. And the next thing I knew, I was waking up on the floor. Well, no. I tried to open my eyes because he started talking again, and I wanted to pay attention to what was going on, but my eyes would not open. And, and so I started to pull on him with my hands, and it, then, then my sister said I was just kind of thrown to the floor, and I woke up, I think it was an hour and a half later, and, um, and I was like, well, you know, that was strange. And so I went home, <laughs> and, um, and we came back the next night, and... I was a little reluctant to come up here again, but I did, and, and then Brother Hill prayed for me. It was the first time anybody had prayed for me, and, um, and I fell. You know, my whole body was just, just nothing, and I just fell, and I laughed for maybe a couple minutes, and I got up, and I went and sat down, and went home, and so then my mom the next day, she said, we're going back to church. I said, okay. So I, ha I had to work. Um, I'm a cashier at a grocery store, and I didn't get off till 6.45, and so I had to run home. No, 7.30. I got up at 7.30, and I ran home, got ready, came back, because by then there was a hunger, a slight hunger in me for what was going on here. And so, you know, we ate on the way over here. We ran in, sat down, and we, lit, we sat through the, the sermon and, and everything, and then we came back here again, back up here during prayer time. And I stood for, I think, about two hours and waited. And he kept going back and forth and back and forth. And, and I was like, well, I'm just going to stand here until he prays for me. I'll be the last person to get prayed for, but I will stand here and get prayed for. And so I did, and he came and he prayed for me. And, and I fell to the floor. You know, my body was limp again, and I just fell. And, and I laid there, and, and I was in my right mind. And I was in my right mind during the whole thing. And... And I, I said, God, if you're going to do something with me, I'm laying on the floor. You know, I don't do this. And I don't like laying on the floor in the middle of a bunch of people that are they're stepping on me. And, <laughs> and so, you know, in other words, if you're going to do anything, you better do it now because I'm not coming back if you don't. You know, I'm not going to come back down here and lay on the floor again. And so <laughs> he started. There, there was a wave of, of something, and it came from my neck to my waist, and it just jerked and jerked and jerked and and God told me I said what are you doing and he said I'm cleaning you out because I had so I, I mean I know that until this week I was just the rottenest person I knew and, that, and I'm not that, that's the truth and you can ask my family I was and they've had to put up with me all my life and I'm sorry for y'all having to put up with me but he said I'm cleaning you out and and so he just cleaned and cleaned and cleaned for, I don't, and I don't know how long it was. They say it was about an hour or so. And then my hand, my right hand, um, it, it began to shake. And it was just shaking real fast. You know, I was laying on the floor and it was just shaking. And I heard people laughing at me. And so I took my other hand and I pulled it down because I don't like to be laughed at. I don't, I don't really like to be around a lot of, you know, in front of all these people. But, you know, God told me to do this, so I am. And... And so I pulled my hand down, and God would weaken this hand, and he would pull this one back up, and he would jerk it. And I was like, why are you doing this? You know, I feel so stupid. And he, he said, Amy, just let me do with you what I want. You know, you, you've put yourself here, and you've said I can, so let me. And so I said, okay. So he jerked my hand and, and jerked it, and finally I was like, you know, my wrist hurts. Can we stop, you know? And... <laughs> <laughs> and so he, he took my hand, well, it's this hand, but, and he held it. He held it like, like this. And, and I was laying on the floor, and he was right there beside me, and he just, 
And it all went kind of numb and tingly, but I could still feel it. It was just like cold and it had tingles. And, and he told me, I'm holding your hand. You know, you don't want me to jerk it, so can I hold it? And I, I said, well, yeah, you know, you can hold my hand. And, and so he held it for a long time, and then he started to pull my arm up. And, you know, I was like, you know, this is, you know, it, this is just all completely strange to me. You know, people say, do you understand? No, I don't understand. But he started to pull my hand up, and it got all the way out. And, it, and I was like, well, what now? And, and so he started to pull my shoulder. And, and to make a long story short, he pulled me all the way up till I was on my tiptoes. And I had him, and, you know, I'd pull against it with, with my strength. And, and I knew he had my hand because I couldn't pull my hand down. And... So he got me up there, and I said, God, I can't go any farther than this. I'm, I can't lift, you, you know, I'm not going to go up off this ground. And, and I guess it came down to that I didn't have the faith in him to pick me up off the ground. But then he let, my, he let go of my hand, and my hand began to shake just very, very fast, just up in the air. And then I, I just lost all my strength, and I fell to the ground. And I said, God, what are you doing? And he said... He told me that it was just like in my life, if, if I had faith, he could take me anywhere. But if I didn't have the faith, he would let, you know, if I couldn't hold on to him and he couldn't hold on to me, then my life would go like my hand was going and I would fall. And, I, and I, that would be my life, you know, my life would be a disaster if I, if I didn't hold on to him. And so I understood that. And many things happened. And, and I, whenever I woke up, I, I had been down about three hours. and. And I woke up and there was people, you know, probably about 50 people left in the church. And I think it was about 3.30 or so in the morning. And, and they were looking at it. And I woke up and I was like, why are y'all looking at me? And they thought that was funny because what had happened to me was, you know, it was really happening to me. And I did not realize that anybody was around me. It was just me and God. And so I went home and, and my family asked me what is going on what did God tell you did you see anything and I told them many things that he told me I, I can't even tell you everything now and but now it, it's like you know my friends have called and they've called and they've called and, and I haven't even taken any phone calls because God is showing me you know he's taking a hold of me like he took a hold of my body and like the pastor said I, I could never imagine anybody taking, you know, jerking that fast, and, and I see that, like he took a hold of my body, he's taken a hold of my life, and he, he's turned me around, and I'm quitting my job, because the people at my job are just going to take me in a bad direction, and my name, he told me, um, I think it was Saturday, and he told me, my middle name is Elizabeth, and um, it means consecrated to God, and he told me, he said, Amy, you know, if, I, if I'm going to change your life, you're going to need a new name. And it just so happens that my middle name means consecrated to God. And, and so he told me, I want you to, to stand up. You know, pastor told me after, after these three days, after this jerking went away, what was I going to do to keep my eyes on him? And God told me, change your name because you use your name so much. How could you forget, you know, consecrated to God? And, and so that, that's what he told me. He, he told me that God would... God would tell me, and he did, and so if any of you see me, please try to call me Elizabeth, the ones that know me, so that, so that I won't be Amy anymore. <laughs> Isn't that great? Hallelujah. I'm opening these altars as soon as the music starts for this song. You run to the Lord for mercy. He will not turn you down tonight. You run to the Lord. Don't look around. Don't wait. Don't let the devil sit on your lap. Hop up and you come to Jesus right now. Right now. Get up right now. Don't wait on anybody else. In the dark. Come on. Where everything is unknown, I face the power of sin on my own. I do not know of a place where I, I need could the Lord. go, where I, need the Lord. I could find a I way to heal my wounded soul. Come to his presence. 
Now, folks, when you see someone like this <clears throat> and you just make a snap judgment and you see someone doing something like this, you may say, oh, man, you know, what's going on? But I want to tell you, this girl, she's a brilliant girl. Her mother's a school teacher. Her father's a doctor, a medical doctor. And these girls have been raised in Brownsville Assembly. I know their life, and they're godly girls. But God, during this revival, has gotten a hold of them. And her sister is Elizabeth that's given her testimony on television and here on Friday night in the church. And this is Allison. And God uses her uh, when it comes time for the altar call and things like that. He uses her in intercession. And you'll see her back there really under the power of the Holy Spirit beginning to intercede for lost souls. And she's never done anything like this. I've known her for many years. I've known these girls since they were little bitty girls. I mean like this. I've known them. I've been their pastor. I know beyond any doubt whatsoever that these girls are being moved on by God's Spirit. And Allison, if you can, sweetheart, I want you to take just a moment and just share what the Lord's doing in your life and what's going on. Okay. I can, I'll stand. I'm 19 years old, and um, I've been through high school and I'm in college now, and at the beginning of this revival, I didn't come for the first week. I, I was like everyone else. I wasn't so sure about it, and um, church had always been kind of a, just a requirement anyway. So it was the second Sunday of this revival that I came to the, the night service, and um, uh, Steve preached on... Um, I have a verse for it. Um, to Matthew 6, um, 24, it says, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. And what Steve preached about that night was... You cannot hold on to the hand of God and on to the hand of the world at the same time. And uh, all through high school and college, I've, I've known God. Well, God has had a place in my heart, but he didn't really have a place in my life. And I never thought that God had anything to offer other than just sitting at church. And I'd never given him a chance to do anything in my life. So I was constantly running after the world. I was running after what I, I thought I had to have something that the world would give me. But whenever I heard that 
what Steve preached. I, my eyes were opened, like Steve preached last night. Um, Satan, he blinds us. And I, I was blinded by worldly things that I thought I had to have and worldly friends that I thought I had to have. And all it took to totally change my life was for me to, to, to listen and, and really hear what these people, these men of God are trying to say, what God is trying to say. You know, the Bible says people, they have ears to hear, but they don't hear what people are trying to say and what God is trying to say to, say to them. And um, I listened that night and God totally opened my eyes. He, he changed my whole life. I was terribly depressed because I, I had enough of God in me to know what I was doing was wrong and to be miserable doing it. And I was in the most horrible position you can be in. God says himself, he'd rather spit you out of his mouth than to have you be lukewarm because you're no good to anybody unless you're hot or cold. So, I'm hot now. <laughs> to me the first week of the revival and uh, like they say you don't have to search after the manifestation the manifestation is on me now but it wasn't for a long time I came to lots of meetings and um, I got prayed for and I never felt anything physically happen but my whole life was transformed and now God has given me the gift of intercession, and um, He has, He's allowed me to feel, the Holy Spirit has allowed me to feel just part of the pain that He feels whenever people don't listen to Him. I've realized that the Holy Spirit, He's here. He's waiting on all of us just to, a, a tiny bit of our heart to want him. He'll come in and change your whole life. He'll change everything. Yes, he will. Everything. Whenever, whenever this is on you, Allison, you don't have pain, do you? No, it's not painful at all. You know, <laughs> you know seriously, seriously, Whenever someone sees someone like this that, that, that's manifesting the Spirit of the Lord, they think they're under pain or they're under duress. But it's not like that at all. Tell them what it's like. Well, there's two different kinds with me. Like right now, I think the glory of God is so strong up here, my body just can't really take it. And that, that's why I'm doing this. But right. there's other times whenever I come into God's presence and um, I don't move at all, but inside me, it's like there's just waves of God inside of me. Right. And then there's other times whenever I'm interceding, and it's not painful to my body, but it's painful to my heart because I know that God loves people so much, and He's 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 in a hurry. He He wants. He wants, he wants everyone. He, there's not much, not much more time. And he, he aches and he, he grieves for your spirit. He grieves for you.
can add to it or take away from it. If you're in this building tonight and you're away from God, there's sin in your life and you know it, you need to come back to Jesus. I want you to get up from where you're at and come to these altars right now. Don't wait on anybody else. Get up and come. You need to run to Jesus right now. Get up and come right now. Get up and come right now. You're away from the Lord. I want you to come right now. Get up right now. Up in the balcony. You need Jesus to forgive you, to wash you, to cleanse you. You're spiritually dead. Get up and come right now to the altar. Get up and come right now. Get up and come. This is a message tonight. This preacher is not going to preach. This was a message tonight. This rarely happens, friends, and we're obeying God. We are obeying God tonight. Get up and come. You're away from God. Get up and come right now. If you're backslidden.